What's going on guys? My name is Elden Hero and welcome to the Midnight Hour. This episode is a pretty ill-conceived and thrown together at the last minute type episode because um, last night, which was Thursday night, myself and Dr. John recorded a two and a half hour episode about the New World Order conspiracy theories, but we branched out in the middle of it, abandoned the topic and sort of talked about a lot of things happening in the world right now and um, its relevance to the past and the future and uh, different things about pop culture and stuff and it was a really good episode like we were both really happy with it and then the file uh, the the audio recording was corrupt so we actually couldn't use it so um, I put so much effort into that episode we planned it out so well I was so tired by the end of it because I felt this massive sense of relief from just all the stuff that we talked about. Uh, so to not actually have the file recorded was basically a really crushing bro, a crushing bro, a crushing blow bro to my, uh, you know, mental capacity. So um, I DM'd uh, Loose More tonight. I was like, hey man, you want to come on the podcast and we can talk about movies for an hour and just talk about whatever and uh, he was gracious enough to accept and I was delighted because a I love talking about movies and b I love talking about movies with Loosemore because I think uh, his perspective is similar enough to mine but um, you know uh, captivating in a way and I, I like to know his opinions on stuff so um, what you're about to listen to if you do indeed choose to listen is um, a unscripted unplanned unstructured episode of the podcast uh where myself and loose more just kind of talk about movies and tv shows for the whole thing so i understand and appreciate that some of you don't care for movies or tv shows and you don't come to this podcast for that and to you i'm sorry honestly we had something else in mind it didn't come to fruition um it's out of my control and it fucking sucks to be quite honest with you like i was so angry last night um like it, it just it brought me down um but i'm really happy that uh loose more agreed to uh to record this episode so that's what's happening the intro music if you're wondering is something that i stole from uh, my friend steve's computer he told me not to use it he said he's not finished with it it's not nearly done it's just a rough thing but i really like it so i'm using it on my podcast and there's nothing he can do about it so um that's that if if for those of you who were wondering what it was, if it ever pops up in a song in future, you'll know where it came from. Um, so yeah, we're just going to go into the episode. I don't even know what this episode is titled. Again, I'm sorry if you didn't like this sort of format of the episode, but hey, if you do like it, leave a rating, let me know, leave a comment, go to the subreddit. All the links for everything will be in the description. Buy a fucking t-shirt if you want. Summer's coming up. You're going to need to get into the habit of wearing short sleeves. You weirdos who usually wear long sleeves, people with tattoos and stuff like that. Um, I talk a little bit about my new job in the episode too, for anyone who's interested in that kind of thing. Also, there's only like four minutes of wrestling talk. So if you uh, hear the opening bit and you're like, oh my God, this is wrestling. I don't like wrestling. It'll be over really soon. I promise. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the episode. If you do, please do let me know. It would actually mean a lot because I was very down after what happened uh, with last night's episode. So um, anyway, I'm going to stop talking now. Uh, you're going to hear a little bit of music and then you'll hear the episode. Peace! can stop me. I'm joined today by Lewis Moore. That's a funny joke I made earlier. Because he's the inventor of what? what's up. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, today we're going to talk about stuff. We have no um, plan for this episode uh, because I recorded an episode with my doctor friend last night and um, my software that I used was like lol nope. So I think we were we were talking about conspiracy theories and we obviously touched on too much truth if you know what I mean mm. and the new world order came in and they shut that shit down I love Alex Jones so much 
Um, but yeah, the New World Order and the Lizard People stopped us from releasing that episode. So we're actually recording this like four hours before you hear it, which is kind of like a thing that we never, ever, ever do. So we're like right up to date on Friday's news. Like, mm. just, you know, you want to talk about the bus air and strike? Fucking yeah, there'll, there'll be no bit in this episode where we, we're like, we recorded this on Wednesday, so we don't know what's happening. Yeah, yeah. we do know what's happening now. But but yeah. we also live in a time where I can confidently say, regardless of what day it is, I can say, Jesus, man, did Trump's tweets this morning were fucking wildly inaccurate. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, how have you been, Lewis Moore? Tell tell the people how you've been. It's been a while. Um, wow, well, I've I've lived. Tell, I mean, tell in, in tell, the tell them way. all the stuff you just told me about how you've been. Uh, all the st- all the stuff and the things. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's been it's been a wild, wild ride. <laughs> we're we're, uh, we're on the road to WrestleMania. That like I mean, we're coming up to WrestleMania now. Like it's probably yeah. the next left at this junction, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not many turns left. No, no. There's, so that's pretty exciting. This is going to be like the first time in four years, I think, that I haven't watched it live because I have a new job now and I'm not allowed to watch wrestlemania <laughs> <laughs> what's your job oh my god right i actually want to tell you about my job um i i i won't tell you about the job itself i'm a transfer agent i work for uh i i move money around for 21 different funds and it's it's very boring the word fun is in the word fund nothing to do with it though really weird uh, um so they did just add the d for like a sort of like well, i would just We've got fun, but we'll just add another letter. It wasn't that at all. It was just completely different things. Well, originally, it was actually a lot of fun. And what would happen is you would put your money into the fund. um, And then they would reply and say, you just got fund. As in, like, F-U-N apostrophe D. D, yeah, yeah. You have been fund. You know, fun has fallen upon you. You have been fund. Um, But then over time, you know, the the corporate bankers and the lizard mm. people they they took over the whole concept of of yeah. what it meant to have fun so funds aren't fun anymore and that is a fact um so anyway uh, i work in a huge open plan office probably like 100 people in my office but uh, my section my team is like 12 people um of which i only know the names of about 6 but um my desk is myself there's someone next to me someone in front of me someone next to him so it's like a bank of four and then there's another bank of four in front and the two guys that's the one guy sits next to me one guy sits in front of me and they're both huge wrestling fans or at least they know an awful lot about wrestling and uh so we've every single day is wrestling trivia day now and the guys in the bank across from us also really like wrestling but not to the same degree like they liked it up until like 95 so like oh right okay they they even cut off before like the attitude era really came. yeah oh yeah yeah they have no they, they know nothing about the attitude era but they'll tell you how many people's hair brewed as beefcake cut back in the day but it's right. like it's like the, the wrestling trivia is a thing in the office now like it, it's it's not just a thing that the nerds do like it's a full-on thing that happens mm-hmm. and there's always two completely separate wrestling conversations going on about two completely different eras in wrestling and i work for a fund department in a financial fucking corporation so um yeah no yeah. it's it's so so you're cool. like swapping like money around and or you yeah. should be but what you're actually doing is like talking about Razor Ramon's chest hair or something. Ridiculous. Yeah, I am literally yeah. moving like millions of euros into a hedge fund while talking about what X Pac's name was when he debuted. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so good. But why can't that? But then brings me to the original. Why can't working at that place where you talk about wrestling a lot? Why can't you watch WrestleMania? Uh, yeah, because. Regardless of the wrestling thing, our hours are nine to five, <laughs> and WrestleMania concludes at like five a.m. So it's pretty bad. But uh, you could just do what I did that time and just not sleep. Yeah, yeah. Me and you watch wrestle. What, what WrestleMania was that? It wasn't the last one, was it? It was the nah, it was, was the Lesnar Reigns one. Reigns it's one. Yeah, the yeah. greatest main event in the history of WrestleMania, I think. That um, pop for Rollins, it's just amazing. But yeah, and just the match itself, like Roman Reigns so spitting a tooth into the ring. It, oh, it's so good. 
I watch it back on the network regularly and just like I I just I I, I don't know what this is, but I go like, ah, so good. Whatever that yeah, is, that's yeah. what I do. Mm. Um, yeah. So uh, why did we start talking? Oh yeah, WrestleMania in full swing. Are you gonna watch it actually? Um, I might do. Um, I the, the network said to me. They did that thing. They send you an email like, uh, if you have six days to sign up for your free Road to WrestleMania network thing, and you think, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, wh- who would like not do that? And then no, I haven't done <laughs> it, it for the past like six times. They sent me an email, but uh, I should do. Like, really, I mean, I think up until April. You can log into my network anytime you want. That's... Or I could just do that as I did last time. Yeah, um, it's totally fine by me. I, don't I might watch it. Um, I'm. Not, I mean, some of it just like isn't like the lesnar goldberg thing doesn't do anything for me I really but the other, the other matches do like um i want to see what they do with reigns and take them that's quite interesting yeah um i hope reigns slaughters him just for just for the outrage and the... i just don't yeah because i don't know where like it's gonna go like that's the interesting thing like every year like is this gonna be the year where like someone like puts over the end of, like or well, the Undertaker like puts over somebody, and it was like they did it for Lesnar, and like because now he's unstoppable, and like yeah. oh, it's amazing. But like, are they not going to do it for Reigns? Like, surely they want Reigns to be the future of the company. So if Taker beats him, I don't know. It's just it's one of them weird things where they do in wrestling the way you're like this has to be the thing they do, and then they they don't do it, and you think what? Why? It's so annoying. Like I don't really watch anymore. I I, I watched Fastlane because I had the day off work the next day, and I watched the Rumble because it's the Rumble. You watch that every year. Regard if you don't watch wrestling, yeah. you watch the Royal Rumble. That's just a yeah. Thing even happens. if you don't watch wrestling, you watch the Royal yeah. Rumble. Even if you've never seen wrestling before in your life, well, you have because you saw the Rumble every year because you watch yeah. the Rumble. Um, but uh, yeah, r- the fans have ruined wrestling. The the constant fucking like booing of Roman Reigns and the like oh get Finn Balor in and give him the title and then they did that and then like Seth Rollins injured him and then they I don't it's just it it's I, I'm actually making a wrestling podcast with a buddy of mine um so I know that a lot of people most people who listen to this show don't actually like wrestling so fear not I am making a wrestling podcast <laughs> um but yeah I'll, I'll probably discuss what I think because I, I have a lot of like things to say about the people booing Roman Reigns and why they're wrong, but they think they're so right. They think it's this real righteous anger, and it's like, it's not, lads. You're watching a reality TV show. Like, you mm. you can't keep acting as if you are the writer of it. You're not. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. stop it's acting It's a soap like opera. It. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. belong to you. You don't get to have a say in it like that. You know, like... And then that's not... So, to, I don't know. Fuck it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Fuck everybody <laughs> and everything. Um, what was the main thing that I was going to talk about? Um, TV shows. Are you keeping up with Homeland? No. I, I stopped watching Homeland. I haven't seen any of this season of Homeland. Yeah, don't. But I, I think you... Yeah, like you did tweet out saying it was garbage or whatever. I probably uh, did. I, I have a habit of over um, blowing everything that I say, but it's it, it's not good anyway it's not working it's convoluted it's messy it's just they should have done a thing they 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 teased a thing they were i, I won't spoil it because a lot of people wait till it's done so they can watch it all in one go they they teased a thing that they were gonna do in the last season and they didn't go through with it and now they're suffering the consequences of it because they're stuck with these muddled pieces of a storyline that are not really coming together nicely at all. And also, mm. the season would make a whole lot more fucking sense if Hillary Clinton was elected president. But because Trump is president, watching Homeland in tandem with a Trump America, it doesn't make sense. It, yeah, like, yeah, it yeah. just culturally does not fit the narrative. So, um, yeah. Th- that's, th- that's probably the case for a lot of things, though, isn't it? Like, a lot of political shows... Yeah, like, I guess. I think Homeland is probably the only one that I've ever really stuck to, though, you know? Mm. Mm. Yeah. I mean, do you think... They, I mean, obviously, a bigger question for Homeland is once, like, Brody... What was Brody? His name was Brody, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Once Brody died, was that it for the show? I mean, I watched... Maybe I watched the season or two after that, but, like... I mean, in, in terms of that show, it's like... Those first two seasons were amazing. Yeah. Uh, Because of that, that twist, but... I mean, once a show has that sort of thing where it does that, where that that one element is the thing that keeps you hooked, and then they 
okay, he's dead, or, you know, spoiler alert. Well, uh, it's it's all it's not really a spoiler now. It's old enough that we can openly talk about it. So that's true. Yeah, he dies. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So is it worth like that, or do you think they could have gone like we're two, we're, we're three seasons of incredible like drama, and then that's it? Or do you, a show like that they have to continue? I guess it's not like the BBC where they can just be like we're gonna do two seasons and then we're out. But I guess they have to do like. Yeah, I th- I think. The first season was brilliant, the second season was brilliant. The third season was um, very good in part, and then just... Uh, Which season did Brody die? Uh, season three. Yeah, it was. He yeah, lasted yeah. a long... F- he lasted way longer than he should have. They should have killed him off in... I, like, I think he should have blown up the room full of the... He should have done that terror thing that he was going to In the do. end of season one? Yeah, I, I, I resent that he ended up having a relationship with Carrie, and I don't like the way they use Carrie that way. It's so, um, it's just so obvious, you know, like, mm. but, um, season four, I think was, I don't know what season we're on now. I think we're on season seven, but either way, the last season before this one was my favorite Homeland season ever. It was brilliant. It covered the refugee crisis and made commentary on that. It was set in Germany. So like, I guess it was more relevant to us as Europeans and, um, Whatever, the season before that one, though, was meh, and season three was okay in parts, and then the first two were brilliant. Like, I legit popped when Abu Nazir got killed. Like, I jumped out of my seat, and I was like, yes! You know, yeah. like, that that's the kind of show, not a lot of shows make me do that. Um, of course, I do it every time a zombie takes a bullet to the head on The Walking Dead. But Oh, yeah, every time. <laughs> or a knife to the head, or a fucking, yeah. what did Maggie use? The, uh... What do you call those things that they use to dig a garden? It's like a little spade thing. What are they called? A trovel or a... A shovel? Nah, it's like... I know what the word shovel is. It's yeah, like but a... you said trovel. Like I'm... Like you were like confused. You just... <laughs> yeah, like I, I had a stroke. <laughs> so it almost certainly begins with TR. It's a little, little diggy thing. Anyway, Maggie used one of those to kill a zombie on the recent episode of The Walking Dead, which was yeah, which was edge of your seat stuff. As did as, you see? Uh, did you watch the new the latest episode? Mm. Mm, I did. Yeah, it's. Mm, I think meandering is the kindest way you can put the last two episodes. It's so close to being the greatest show ever made. So like. I know that that's an outrageous thing to say, but it it is actually so close to doing that. Like, mm-hmm. when The Walking Dead is good, it's brilliant. But when it... I, I don't know. It's like, it's like they're like, all right, guys, we've got an hour and a half of the best television ever seen. Let's stretch this out into 48 episodes. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> oh, my it's, it's God. It's weird that I think that, that at times it feels like they're kind of scared of telling... Uh, a, a real I don't know, but like they do these episodes where you're like, just, I, that wasn't was that necessary? Yeah, like, completely. Is that part of an overarching story? Like I get like some episodes in like a dra- of like a 24 episode drama, there's gonna be some filler because they have to have 24 episodes or 23 or whatever it is in a season full, uh, like usually 40 minute show. But The Walking Dead is longer than 40 minutes because it's on AMC. You should have and said they only that. have like thirteen episodes or, or however many they have. So it's they don't like, it's have like to twenty have... or something, isn't it? Is it twenty episodes? Yeah, yeah, they do a mid season break, that's why it seems like more. Oh, that's why it's confusing, yeah. Yeah. You should but have maybe... said um you should have said it's not like twenty four where they have to have I don't know, what is it, twenty three or twenty five episodes, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, it, it is it's just full of filler. The the latest the, the latest like story arc of uh, Rosita being like sad and dead inside is like oh my god you've done this how many fucking times now yeah it's it's always like they're doing that thing though they're overplaying the fact it's the walking dead you guys the people are the walking dead <laughs> they're the ones who are dead inside don't you get it and we're like yeah no it's been seven seasons we get it like, they are the ones yeah yeah okay we get it like the yeah. audience every single episode is like ah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's so true. It's so annoying. Like, it's... If I... I don't know. It, it, it's... They've got, like, 12 titular characters, which they've each got to have an arc where they're, like, dead inside. Like, yeah. Oh, which one of the characters hasn't been dead inside yet? Okay, it's Rosita. She's going to be the one who's, like, 
having emotional issues. She's not coping well with the end of the world. Um, yeah, we'll put her with Sasha, who's gone through the same thing. Uh, oh, we've got nothing for Dead Inside Rick to do. Oh, let's have him farm for seven episodes in a row. Yeah. <laughs> have him yeah. plant some vegetables and talk to Herschel about life. Like, ah, yeah. It's such a frustrating show. So close to being the best ever, but just, I don't know, squeezing the life out of it piece by piece. Um. Mm. Uh, so a show I really wanted to talk about is The Expanse and um, I'm sorry for those of you that don't watch TV shows but you know it's my podcast so you can fuck up no um, it's April Fool's Day that's why I said that um, The Expanse is a space opera show and I think it might be the best piece of science fiction television in what year is Firefly 2007 we'll say 10 years um, it's incredible uh, season 1 is slow burning but to its credit, I would say that it keeps the intensity up for the entire episode. So while you feel like nothing actually happens, a lot happens and you get introduced to the vastness of the universe they create. And then season two, which is airing currently, is just so fucking good. Like, it's just, it's so satisfying to see everything coming together and... The pace has been upped so much, and it's all of a sudden just this incredible show. And uh, you really respect how they took 10 episodes to sort of lay the groundwork for what was to come, because it's basically set in a... I think it's 200 years into the future, and Earth is Earth, and Mars has been colonized and uh, terraformed by Earth. But Mars and Earth don't actually like each other. Mars is like an entire military nation, it's like, it, it's so Republican, basically, and Earth is, like, the Democrat-type thing, blue and red, obviously. Um, and for anyone who's like, oh, you always bring politics into it, like, I'm on Mars's side. Um, then, in the middle, there's a thing called the Belt, which is just a series of asteroids that, like, there's different stations on them, and they're mining colonies, and miners are... They basically represent the oppressed and the underclass, and they are a group of people who are always on the receiving end of every negative thing that happens between Earth and Mars, who are, like, these two privileged um, planets that have, you know, like, no poverty or anything like that. But every time they make a big decision, it affects the belt. People born on the belt have lower life expectancy because of the gravity conditions that they live in and stuff like that. Mm. And, um, like, so that whole thing is happening, and then there's... Um, a sort of a space voyage aspect of the show with uh, James Holden and uh, some other people. Dominic Tipper. Uh, Dominique Tipper. Tripper? Tipper? I think it's Tipper. She plays one of the... She's great. Um, and then Thomas Jane is in it, and he plays, like, this noir detective guy from, like, a 60s show, and it's fucking incredible. Um, so there's, like, two different stories that go on in season one. It, season one's good. Like, I, I didn't give it enough... Whatever. Um, but season two is amazing. And I just think everyone should watch The Expanse. It's great science fiction television. There's no reason to not be watching it right now, you know? What kind of, uh, like, budget... Like, does it... When it does spacey things, are you thinking, uh, it doesn't look great? Or are you thinking, ah, oh, that actually looks quite good for TV? Or how do you, like... It um... looks and feels fantastic. Oh, really? Yeah. You feel like there there's so many different space stations and different moons and, and different mining colonies, and you genuinely feel like you are in all of those different worlds, and you can feel the difference between all of them. It's, um... It's does a... it, like, borrow from other... Are there, like... I mean, obviously, this is, like... Uh, does it borrow from, like, like you know, that feel of, like, Star Trek, or is it more like aliens? You know, that, that sci-fi feel of, you know, where, like, colonizing planets from aliens and stuff like that? It's... Or is it... It's actually. How would you describe it? I would honestly describe it as something that's not like anything I've seen before. Like, I, so I'm a huge Firefly fan. I think Firefly borrowed a lot from Star Trek. I think there's a very Star Trekky feel, and also a Star Warsy feel. Um, there's a lot of cliches in Firefly. I think it uses them very well, but they're cliches nonetheless. The like witty quips that people make in it there's none of that in the Expanse. It's very, very raw and just real. It's like they've created this. Um, politically charged sort of edgy world where every and I say edgy in the sense that everyone is on edge there's like so much tension in it and you feel like 
you're sort of looking at this powder keg that's so close from uh, Earth and Mars going to war with each other and the belt being stuck in the middle. And it's like you can sympathize with the people in the belt and the why they feel the way they do, why they sympathize with like terrorist factions and stuff. And then there's one of the characters that follows closely is a politician on Earth and she's awesome, like a great, great character. It, it does take you a few episodes to warm to her, though, I will say that. Um and Mars didn't really get a lot of attention in the first season, but in the second season they really, really do. Um, so it's not like it's it's more serious than any other sci-fi thing, you know. There, there's like mm. no slapstick stuff in it. There, there's lots of funny moments. Don't get me wrong, but not to the same wink at the camera degree that other shows would have. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. Like... Firefly was kind of the original Marvel movie if you like you know yeah what I mean? like, yeah I'd completely i think because obviously it was joss whedon and he did the avengers but he is very much that kind of filmmaker isn't he like can you imagine uh, if joss uh, whedon directed guardians of the galaxy i mean it would be just the avengers wouldn't it yeah i guess i like i i think guardians of the galaxy is awesome anyway but i i think a joss whedon one would maybe be a little bit better possibly i don't know i mean yeah i mean i guess like give him chris pratt and like watch him like like do witty quips like one hundred percent of the time, I guess. But watch yeah. him make a likable character out of Chris Pratt because nobody's done that yet. Come at me, haters. <laughs> I, yeah, I have a problem with Chris Pratt, and I I don't know what it is. I'm just like I'm I'm tired of him already, and I don't even know him. Like like every like people are huge fans of him, and I didn't really care about him, but I was like, oh, I'll check out Jurassic World because I like that. I th- I think the problem is like he was incredibly good in. Parks and Recreation, if you ever saw that. But... Yes, yeah, see, I've never seen that, so I think that's why I don't appreciate it. But he's almost a secondary character in that, and he's not on screen all the time. He's not one of the main characters. He's kind of like a side... Well, he is one of the main characters, but he's not given as much plot time as like the main character, Leslie, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and But I think in movies, you're kind of like, because he's so likable, everyone... The movie business is kind of like, look how likable he is. You know what Yeah, I mean? yeah, it totally his... is. Like look at look look at look at the things he's doing. Isn't that likable? And but then he's not really that likable in in his movies. Like he's he's charming, obviously, but like um, he's not particularly likable at all. Like in uh, if you've seen Magnificent Seven, I haven't. Not, Is it good? Uh, it's all right. I mean, it's not as good as the original, yeah. uh, but it's a decent enough sort of action western type thing well i always i mean denzel washington is amazing and everything so yeah i'll pretty much always watch a denzel washington movie but uh, i I, um i love that thing denzel does when he's angry and he sort of stutters like on purpose he's like Mm. what 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 do you you know like yeah 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 he he did that so amazing in training day that was yeah training day was brilliant and in um in in american gangster i think as well yeah he did that too yeah yeah he's such a good actor he's like 65 just um Ca- it's mind. unbelievable how old he is. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> he just does not look it at all. Yeah. But um, to your point about Chris Pratt, I do agree. Um, my, uh, you know Eugene. He's a, a mutual friend of ours for the listeners. Mm-hmm. Um, he has a lot of um, good insight into the movie world. Um, he'd make a great guest on this show. But he, um, he says, like I, I, I did the Chris Pratt rant to him, and he goes, "Sure, look." Do you sure look is a thing that Irish people say when they're saying listen? Uh, so he goes, sure look. Do you think Jennifer Lawrence is in all these movies because of her acting ability alone? It's like no, it's because she's a big personality off screen. Like she's quirky and you know full of personality basically. And Chris you Pratt know that she saying, sells movies in those fucking uh, movie junket things where they go on and like they do like five minute interviews to like the press that's where they sell those movies because yeah, Jennifer yeah. Lawrence and Chris Pratt Will Smith Robert Downey Jr people like that just sell those movies even if those movies are fucking terrible yeah did you um, see Logan by the way haven't have, still haven't seen it yet no oh, I'm so surprised you're such a comic book nerd like I know yeah I don't know why I haven't seen it I, I just I just never saw it I mean I, I watched Skull Island instead and I told you about it but and there's no, nothing against Scotland. It's just not how, yeah. I, I to be honest, I was too harshly critical of it, but I think because I'm just annoyed with Hollywood taking big things and making other things fight bigger things. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, did you like Godzilla? Yeah. Um, yeah, I loved it. But, uh, but I mean, because obviously, I don't know if you've seen Skull Island, but the end of it, like, their main goal is to make Godzilla fight King Kong in the next one, aren't they? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, that's, um, I haven't seen Skull Island, but I know from the fact that they're making a, a Kong versus Godzilla movie that that's what they're going for. But yeah. It's annoying because I thought Godzilla was great and I thought it wasn't tacky and it wasn't it, it like there's so much beautiful cinematography in that movie. Um, you, like the main character, what's his name? The guy who Aaron Taylor Johnson, I think, is his name. Yeah. Um, he's married to like a 74 year old or something, by the way. You should look that up. It's really weird. But um, yeah, she's like 50 with like uh, children almost his age. Yeah. I think. Yeah, it's yeah. Fucked up. when when they first met, he was like seventeen or something. Mm. Pretty weird. But um, yeah, Godzilla, like he he's he's not really that good of a an action hero guy. Like he has like no charisma in that movie at all. <laughs> yeah. And they yeah. made a really bold decision to kill off um Hal from Malcolm in the Middle early on. So it's like th- there's no real like star in that movie when you're actually watching it. Uh, the Olsen girl is amazing. Um. Ashley Olsen, I think. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, mm. It's the older one. Elizabeth is her name, isn't it? Elizabeth Olsen? Yeah. So she she's really good in the movie, but like she's, she doesn't get the screen time of, of, uh, of Taylor Johnson. But like, there's like nothing going on, like no character for you to root for as such, but the cinematography itself becomes the centerpiece of that movie. Like that Halo jump scene is like, honestly, in my top five greatest scenes of the last decade, if not more, um and and like it's so good it's just it holds its own by being a great piece of cinematography where i i haven't seen skull island by but i assume it's not quite the same although the teasers did look really good with the apocalypse now uh mirage sun effect thing yeah i mean there's a lot because it's set in the 70s i mean you'd have to see it now i'd I'd interested to see what you think of it but I mean, I think to me it tried really hard to be good. Like it, <laughs> yeah, it, I know it, what you it, mean. It, like, people like me to like it. Like, look at this '70s soundtrack. They're playing movie like music that you might like. Look at the, it's King Kong fighting monsters and John Goodman's here and that guy from all the British stuff, Loki. The guy, he's great. He's he's in it too. And I'm just like, yeah, okay. But the, the overriding thing is like, it's a monster fighting other ridiculous monsters uh, you know it could be, like i said to you it could be megatron versus fucking optimus prime yeah. in the of an island it just i'm getting like a little bit so i need i need more to keep me like for you like that that godzilla thing like the cinematography was great and like it's okay like in kong but i don't know that's uh, I, I don't like the idea of them dragging godzilla into that world because it's like lads let gareth edwards work away with the godzilla universe because he has done a phenomenal job with that movie and monsters before that he's a guy that doesn't need the flashy sort of throwing things at things like michael bay aspect of movies i like i don't know it's just i was excited for godzilla 2 but now I'm not because I, and there's a, I have a mate of mine at work who we, we we know a lot about movies and we like talk about it. Um, and we just we can't get around the thing that like Godzilla vs King Kong will be Batman vs Superman, won't it? Like it's yeah. quite clearly it's two things that they so badly want to come together and work that it's just going to be Batman vs Super. Like Godzilla will find out that King Kong's mother has the same name, <laughs> and then they'll just not fight each other anymore. So, like you know. Why are you saying Mrs. Kong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's uh? It's it's the Godzilla and King Kong are just gonna team up to take on Death Lord or Mega Death or what's the fucking bad guy in Superman that they take on Death Spiral? Oh uh, yeah, I know who you Apocaly- mean. Apocalypse. Uh, Apocalypse. No. What uh, what was his name? Um, I don't know. It's a play on words. It, isn't it's an it? end like, of the world thing, I think. Yeah. Like, cause there's so many Superman, Superman bad guys that are like Dark Side, <laughs> but it's spelled differently. Like, okay, <laughs> it's spelled with a Z. Yeah. Um, I I actually asked, had you seen Logan? Just because have you have you seen at least the Instagram uh, video of Hugh Jackman doing the acting bit for when he's running through the woods and he's like, do you know what I mean? He's running on a treadmill. 
And yeah, 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 he's doing like the voiceover. Almost, yeah, he's doing the yeah, audio yeah. dub for uh, Wolverine yeah. running through the fire. And there's this huge Ackman acting. He's running on a treadmill and he's like, gah, gah, yeah. Wolverine smash. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, so when it ends, he's like, he kind of comes out of character and just goes, hi. And he's the greatest guy in the world. And um, I, I absolutely love, love, love and get endless enjoyment from thinking about the parallel between Hugh Jackman being like, well, you know, I am the greatest uh, personification of a character on the big screen ever. And I just go in and out of character like that. And Jared Leto being like, I must send dead rats and used condoms to Marco Robbie so that I can be the Joker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. Just Jesus Christ. But um, Logan was awesome and Hugh Jackman truly is the man, I think. There is that weird thing with the Joker. Like, people think, like, it's weird. Like, maybe, like, Jack Nicholson, like, just is a bit weird. So he's able to cope with it. Whereas, like, Heath Ledger, like, drove himself to death almost kind of playing that character like i know obviously he had problems but he essentially like got into character and overdosed and now jared leto's like yeah he's clearly fucking insane anyway but <laughs> i know but like he's like did playing the joker didn't like help but yeah i don't know is that i just want like somebody to play the joker and just be kind of normal afterwards be like yeah just a character yeah, yeah i know jared leto is so difficult because like he's genuinely a world-class actor like i i truly believe that he is a top-tier actor i i have never seen him play a role where i've been like that was bad he, he's in this movie called mr nobody and it's just incredible like his performances in it are i say performances because he actually plays more than one iteration of himself um it's phenomenal like he is an outstanding actor like, like eddie murphy right yeah exactly he is like eddie murphy <laughs> um but he is such an awful person for, like every single thing i've seen from him just seems like he's a complete dick and also 30 seconds to mars are fucking garbage so it's a shame it's like i want to root for him so bad but he just mm. I don't, he just doesn't want me to, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's strange. Yeah, he's not trying. Ha- just be more Chris Pratt. Yeah, uh, or, or just be more like a, a manic, like a per, a, a default. You know, a person who hasn't uploaded their avatar yet to the. I don't know. He's just. <laughs> he has to be so like, ooh, look at me! I've had sex with at least four dead animals. And it's like, ugh. Mm. You know that Jared Leto has definitely. Could I get in trouble for saying he's definitely had sex with a girl where he wasn't sure what age she was? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there's like I could like you could list like I'm not gonna list them, but you could list like three or four actors maybe. You're like <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could. They've done that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'd e- I'd even go so far as to say I could name about ten wrestlers who've definitely done that as well. Oh yeah. You can tell. All I'll it's, say. It's, it's far easier to name the wrestlers who haven't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll just say this, and this this has uh, don't contextualize this with what I just said, but the way Randy Orton slithers around the ring, <laughs> <laughs> you know something's up with that. You don't need to say anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, was there? I. I um. I know that we're just floating around topics here. This episode is like we didn't plan anything, and that's that's cool. But um, I did say to you like earlier on in the week that I wanted to talk about movies that we'd like to see remade. Did you have anything to say about that? Like any movie in your mind that you thought would be well serviced if they remade it now? I actually have this thing with my mate, um, and we talk about what if they remade the Star Wars prequels now. Oh, yeah, that's a good uh, now, one. now, now, knowing that you can make good Star Wars movie if you just keep to the sort of yeah, yeah, Star Wars of it, and and would those movies still be bad because because they were bad because nobody had the appetite for them back then, or just because they, I don't know, it's a weird one. If they remade them now, I think honestly they they would be better. I mean, if you took uh, well all the shitty sort of like. Um, trade unions or whatever. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, but if you took that, like, I think they'd be worth remaking again, to be honest, because there's so much cool stuff in those movies. 
Um, yeah. Uh, it'd be worth revisiting. I mean, there's a lot of stuff um, they do in the new Alien Covenant movie. Um, I mean, would I be interested to... Is there a movie I want to be remade that would be worth remaking? I don't... Um, well, what do you think, for example, like, they're remaking The Matrix. Do you have... Oh, yeah. Do you have an That's... opinion on that either way, or...? I mean, the first Matrix movie is genuinely fantastic but yeah, i mean is, yeah. they they get worse um yes. that, yeah the That's the fair. guys not the guys the girls who, what do we say about them now the wachowski sisters or whatever they are yeah um, yeah wachowski or whatever yeah they're sisters now right not brothers anymore that's right yeah that um but are they in, are they doing the matrix or is it somebody else as far as i know it's somebody else it's uh mm. yeah i mean it, I, I, it would be interesting. I mean, it, I wouldn't say that it'd be something that I'm like hyped about. Um, yeah, I, I think it's like those movies got less and less interesting, um, for me anyway. But um, no, nah, I'm with you. I think the, I think the second one has some cool bits in it, but ultimately, the, I don't think it served its purpose. I don't think it did what it tried to do. Yeah. Um, I think the problem is now, now we're in a, an, uh, a time where Every movie from like our generation, like if you grew up in the eighties or nineties or whatever, those movies are going to be re- remade. And if they haven't already been remade, they're going to be soon. So I guess n- nothing's untouchable, really. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, the, you know, the, there's Ghostbusters that we got remade, but it didn't bother me. It was okay. Like it was you know, fine. I, yeah, was I didn't boycott it because women women can't make movies. Yeah, <laughs> um, I had a. We actually mentioned that in the uh, ill-fated episode from last night. I had a. a it was. It was. Uh, Doctor John was the guest, and um, he was basically against the idea of it being remade. And um, he made some like very fair points. And I, we we had a, a an interesting discussion about it, and I just uh, I wish people got to hear it because I think I spend a lot of time being like people didn't want it because there were women in it because i I genuinely believe that like yeah i think the problem is sometimes i'm so like a bit like you really like people can come at me with a good argument against what i believe and i'm like actually that's a really fucking good point yeah Uh, yeah. and i'll kind of change my opinion but no i'm with you i i think people did just backlash against it because it was women but i don't think that was obviously the issue i mean there are a lot of people out there who just don't want their favorite movies being remade but what what john said people. was um we had like a big discussion like my i i sort of had a monologue about um diversity in hollywood and how the reason that they're doing it is capitalism it's not pandering or virtue signaling or any of these things it's literally because diversity sells in hollywood now like you put a woman in a star wars movie and it sells more than it would if it's a man if if they made the force awakens with a guy in the main role people wouldn't like it and like i know that's an outrageous thing to say because it's star wars right but consider this the force awakens with a guy in it is literally a new hope like that we all know that and understand that but the reason we accept it is because the new protagonist is a woman and Mm it's okay, we're willing to go ahead and see what happens with her character because it's something new. I'm sure people will argue against me with that, and that's fine. Like, you're, you're totally welcome to do that. But the Fast and Furious movies are fucking killing it at the box office every single time they release one. And I'm telling you right now, it's not because Paul Walker's a really good actor. It's because they have a really diverse cast. And it's because black people can be like, oh, well, there's a black guy in this movie. I relate to this guy. I'll watch it. Because there is Also, such a... you put The Rock in the movie right now and yeah. it's going gonna... Oh, it's... to be good. It's like four fire emojis. Yeah. <laughs> in a row. <laughs> it, yeah, it's that that's good. Yeah. Um but but that's like that's a genuine truth, right? Diversity sells. And I, I I am willing to grant any argument that the inclusion of women in the Ghostbusters movie was a token gesture from Hollywood to try and sell more. Like an empty, like vapid, effortless idea of Let's put women in it. People will love that. And I understand any argument against that. I'm fine with that. That's totally cool. If that's your stance, like, you are correct in that. And I I won't argue against you. I won't call you a misogynist. I won't do anything over the top like that. But the fact that the movie 
um, five days before it even hit the cinemas, it had like a 2.4 rating on IMDb, and it was males under the age of 18 who came primarily from 4chan. Like, that just says something about the type of people who wanted the movie to fail, I think. Yeah. And, and that's not me being ageist. I'm saying that these are predominantly the demographic of users from a website that is notoriously misogynistic and is notoriously politically incorrect. And even you can probably read archived things from the subreddit that was like, how can we get this movie to fail? What are things we can do to campaign against this movie before it was even out? So I don't think people gave it a fair ride. And I think they did it because of different reasons. But I think people definitely hated it. Like, some people definitely hated it because it was women instead of Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd. I I, I mean, to me, it's a solid 6 out of 10 movie, but it, yeah, I didn't I, like I, it. it was... I didn't like it ultimately more than the original Ghostbusters because, for me, the CGI didn't work. It just, it just disaffected me in the movie. Like, it took me out of it a little bit, especially the final act. Um, I, th- I don't know whether that was because, having seen the original, I was always comparing and the understated like use of CGI in the original, and even when they did use it, it was shite. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the cut, I mean, the, the everybody like Melissa McCarthy's always funny in things. Like she's never like n- n- terrible. Uh, um, yeah, that, that that wasn't. They weren't anything bad. Like the women in that movie weren't. You know. Um, but yeah, to me, it wasn't. It it was okay. Like it wasn't. I wouldn't like. So oh, I'm I'm not one of a lot of people that I know are like women are just not funny or not yeah, as funny yeah. as men and there's that sort of like nonsense and it's just like you know that's not you have that opinion because it, it's like there are more white men in in the world so predominantly there are going to be more more white men in roles of things than anybody else yeah and 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 in fairness white men are more relatable to the majority because the majority are white men right so like it's yeah. it's it's like a uh, it, it's a prejudice but it's not a it's not a, an inherently self-aware prejudice right it's like yeah. the same way a baby prefers a white person when it's a white baby because that's what it's used to it's it's like it's like a chemical thing like that that's fine like yeah you know, but also if you look back in the history of hollywood like they've been remaking things for ever yeah. Like that, in the beginning, it was white people who made movies, and then they did comedies, and then the dramas, obviously, and then they in the sixties or seventies, like they remade a bunch of those. Basically, they remade a bunch of those movies with different characters, but in terms of storytelling tropes, they remade them again with like Richard Pryor and uh, a white actor, and then they remade them again, but with two black actors or a woman and a man, and now they're making all movies with predominantly female leads like it's just it, they're gonna get to the point where like they've before they had women in movies they had babies and dogs as the leads you know what i mean like, <laughs> yeah it, it's yeah. ridiculous but it's like, it's like it's like here's a great way of thinking about it for anyone who's like losing focus here um the the movie uh lethal weapon right with uh uh, Danny Glover and, Mel Gibson. and Melanie Gibson. Mel- <laughs> Melanie Gibsonovich. They basically <laughs> take the so so that movie was one of the first um, high profile buddy cop movies to have a black guy. Like they did it after with Forty Eight Hours and, and like lots of other movies. But yeah, in, yeah. In, in Lethal Weapon, what they did, and this is why Lethal Weapon is so good and and so clever, was they basically took the classic white guy portrayal in Hollywood and the black guy portrayal in Hollywood and flipped it. Danny Glover is the white guy in that movie. He lives in a four bedroom house. He's got married. A sta- yeah. Stable family, like a nuclear family. Like he has his shit together. He's a really good cop. And yeah. then Mel Gibson, who is a train wreck of a person yeah. coming from the ghetto. In real life. No, I mean, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He comes from the, he hates Jews, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> That that's why that movie's so clever is because they did things like that and and it's like I I think people are like reacting to like that those kinds of changes are happening now in Hollywood and people are reacting negatively to it and I don't think that they should because I think that kind of um, character subversion has like Mad Max Fury Road was just a phenomenal movie and it had Charlize Theron was basically the new Mad Max in it like Max 
in it is very feral and raw and animalistic, more so than Mel Gibson's was. And it's mm. like a passing of the torch to Charlize Theron, uh, Furiosa. And I'm sure people like are unhappy about that or whatever. So I will concede that I thought Raiden was an awesome character in Metal Gear Solid 2. <laughs> so like, what do I know about <laughs> Jane passing the torch from the macho badass guy to the wimpy bitch or whatever <laughs> but you know um yeah good point i i, I just i like things like that i like a subversion of expectations and i think that it's really good that we're getting that in hollywood because that's my taste and if you don't like it you're a racist <laughs> yeah. just kidding but you know what i mean though it's it's like these these things are are okay they happen it's not really part of an agenda it's it's capitalism it's what the demand is for like whether or not you agree you know so. no it, it, yeah, it, yeah that is absolutely what it is they yeah. they sense the way things are going and the way to make money and that is this is the way it's going like the biggest movie in the last 10 years was the force awakens basically wasn't it since avatar or did it overtake Avatar or whatever i think it um, overtook avatar but not um not until after it came out on dvd so i think avatar still has the record but the force awakens has actually got a higher gross yeah, but the lead in that movie is a is a young woman, and from now on until you know they give it to somebody else, that it will be women in the leads of movies, and I, that, I don't think that's a problem really. I, I uh, think it's cool because there are some great female actors now, and also like the some of my favorite characters from movies have been like John Connor's mum in uh, Terminator Two, Sarah. She's awesome, and mm. and Linda Hamilton who plays her like awesome just it they they they've really struggled to make characters like that over the last what 25 yeah. years or whatever so like it's really good to see that um that kind of thing come back i think i thought right yeah was i mean awesome i mean we the... we both loved the aliens and sigourney weaver you know in when was that 1980 no was it seven when was aliens uh, the first uh, so alien is 79 and aliens i think is like 85 yeah, and that was a female lead back then, and you know, yeah, that movie's incredible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think there are you know, there are good young. I mean, Emma Stone, Brie Larson, um, people like that. You know. Um, yeah. Are, are good. I mean, Jennifer Lawrence, obviously, but she's more in the Chris Pratt mold of look how funny she is and yeah, like weird. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, no, I agree. Um, I I, th I thought um the Jessica Jones Marvel series I think was actually the best one out of all of them. I thought Daredevil season one was amazing, but the Jessica Jones one was slightly better, and Daredevil season two was a little bit shit. But um Jessica Jones, I think, I think like uh if you like analyze them, which I like to do, yeah, uh, th uh the that was a very sort of like it touched on like a lot of female issues in in that in that season with rape and it did and it did it in a way that was like mystical enough to be yeah um... like you didn't have to understand really that that was what was going on to yeah um, like get the show. exactly but that was what that was what was being told and the same with the original like the dead Old season one was like a lot of catholicism and like religion and the rights and wrongs of like what he was doing the second season of Daredevil was kind of more like superheroes, yay! Um, <laughs> I saw a great uh, Twitter description of of Daredevil season two, and it was Daredevil season two is basically, but what if there were ninjas? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what if there were ninjas? And <laughs> it's almost like the, the 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 room full of people. The writers were like, I got this idea. Yeah, <laughs> ninjas, and they're like, yes, ninjas. <laughs> it's Hell's Kitchen, but there are like one thousand <laughs> ninjas. Yeah, 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 and obviously Luke Cage dealt with a lot, a lot of like um, black issues. I'll be but... honest, I gave up with it after like four episodes. I haven't even. I, I watched the first episode of Iron Fist, and I was like, nah. Yeah, dude, I I didn't even bother with Iron Fist because the trailer was so bad. Or uh... it did. It was not interesting to me at all. Yeah, like Jessica Jones, like it just looked interesting. Like the trailer made it look. Uh. I don't know. There was something about that season, and season one of Daredevil obviously is great. I mean, season two of Daredevil was amazing too, but in a more sort of I love the Electra. Way. The woman yeah, yeah, that yeah. plays her is phenomenal. Like, mm. and and obviously Shane from The Walking Dead as uh, the Punisher. He's great. He's great and everything. He's quality. I absolutely love him. I'd watch anything with him in it. Yeah, he's brilliant. Um, he's no Thomas Jane who played the Punisher in the 2004 epic. 
but which you... brings us right back to Expanse, which is how this started. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas Jane is like one of my favorite actors. He's so fucking good. And he's Punisher... underrated though a little bit. He's what? Underrated a little bit. Doesn't really. Yeah, um... he is. Yeah. He's. I, I. I like all the kind of B movie heroes. Like you know, um, mm-hmm. a huge one for me is uh, Sam. What's his name? Sam Rockwell. Yeah, Sam Rockwell is amazing. He's a he's you stick an, him in anything and and he's great in he's it. He's yeah. brilliant. Like he's an absolutely mm. phenomenal actor. Yeah. Um, I like Guy Pierce as well. Guy Pierce is always good in things. He he doesn't get enough good stuff. I've never heard of him. <laughs> Just kidding. You never heard of? No, right, I was gonna say. <laughs> um, yeah, because I, I love the movie Lockout. It's so bad. It's it's genuinely good. That's the space prison one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah space yeah. prison movie. Yeah, and it's amazing. I love the way Guy Pearce is in that. Yeah, he's made out to be like a sort of like a Kurt Russell Hardman type. Um, I say Kurt Russell in, in. I was thinking like Escape from New York. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, it's so funny that that movie was set in like 1997. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what was I gonna? Oh yeah. Um, on the topic of, is there any movie that you'd want to see remade? Um, this is literally a conversation that I'm gonna have with myself because nobody is gonna is gonna agree with me here. But um, there's a movie called uh, Mysterious Island. It's based on a Jules Verne novel. It's from the 60s, and basically what happens is. Um, it's during the American Civil War, and it's uh, a group of the Republicans, I think, they are in this uh, inflatable hot air balloon thing. I don't know why I said inflatable. It's a hot air balloon. They're in a hot air balloon. Mm, and, one of those non-inflatable hot air yeah, balloons. Yeah, yeah. One of those ones that just flies on its own. Like, it just, yeah. it just flies on its own. And um, they, they, they're, they like, flying over... Uh, I, I, they evade a war or a battle or an ambush or something by flying away. Like this is a movie that I saw when I was very young, so I don't remember every detail. Um, but they they start flying into a storm and it gets really really messy and they have to cut the basket part out of the balloon and they hold on to the ropes that hold it on the top and eventually it, it crash lands on a mysterious island. Whoa, title reference. And um, they in America or like in the Caribbean. I guess it's the Caribbean. It's never really specifically stated because it's an old movie. I and say I... in America. There's no islands in America. I was like, <laughs> America? Um, yes, it would have to be the Caribbean. I, I assume would... it is the Caribbean. Yeah. The South will rise again, man. I don't know why yeah, I said that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so they end up in this island and uh, it's... Do you, are you familiar with... The, what's his name? Like Harryhausen, something like that? The guy who made all the special effects for... Jason and the Argonauts and yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's like that kind of thing, and um, a guy, the main guy and the main girl end up trapped in a, like they they go rooting around. They find this cave that's up in a tree, and this gigantic wasp appears. I mean, they're like the size of the wasp's eyeball. That's how big it is, and it's it like locks them in by um, whatever weird thing wasps do with. They like make fat or I don't know whatever. Um, there's mm. a gigantic bird that appears and like tries to take one of them, and eventually they they somehow kill the bird. But then when they're eating the bird, they realize that there's actually a bullet wound in it, and it wasn't them that did it. It was something else. And it's just it's a mysterious island. It's full of weird shit. Lots of weird shit happens. I would just recommend looking at the trailer and imagining how good it would be if they made that movie nowadays. Mm. Um, and like I say that having criticized the idea of Skull Island, but I think they could do just a better job. I thought Peter Jackson's King Kong, the first like ninety minutes of that movie are basically as good as that kind of movie gets. Like it's the greatest mystery adventure type movie, and they don't yeah. make movies like that anymore. Like there's actually um I don't know if you heard of the um why is that it's a movie with Charlie Hunnam, uh and it's out. Like in a week, or it's out now, and it's called something Z. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, it's a British one specifically. Yeah, it's like set it like in the nineteen twenties sort of uh, era, um, and he's like an explorer, and it's meant to be like an Indiana Jones ish type thing, and that's meant to be really, really good. But yeah, um, but that would be like a mysterious art because I think that is a bit like they they discover like a native tribes people and. 
other things that is exciting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, um, yeah, that could be a mysterious island type thing. Um, I watched a trailer for that, and it does look good. And I think he he'll be good. He'll be like big soon. If I mean, he was in Pacific Rim. I th- yeah, he was in Pacific Rim. Like, he, was, he'll is, probably be the next. Is he the guy Chris from Pratt. Green Street? Mm, is he in? Uh, the... Is he in the biker? Uh, show? Yeah, Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. Yeah, he's the guy from Green Street. He's um. Is... Yeah, he's the major's brother. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, he's like the main guy in Green Street. Um. But he, yeah, he's British, but like has that weird sort of. He's been in America a long time, and right. you're not entirely sure. As long as what. it's better than his fucking Cockney accent, I'm sure it's passable. Um, yeah, but no, I think yeah. Um, but the, yeah, worth checking out that movie. I can't remember what it's fucking called. It's, it's like Civilization Z or like something, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but that sounds a bit like what you you're looking at because those type of movies. Yeah, you're right, don't get made. Like, I, I mean, they talk about, like, Indiana Jones being sort of, like, the return... I think that the original Indiana Jones supposed to have, like, the return of the adventure or something like <laughs> the that. The return of the Mac. Yeah, return of the... Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that, was, that was the song that went with the Indiana Jones. That's right, yeah. Um, <laughs> if people didn't know. Um, but, yeah, like, they had that thing, like... Because those type of movies don't really get made anymore, like, and it's... Like, it's heavily relied on CGI... And you know they are um, remaking the mummy. Well, they they are, but with Tom Cruise, and not not that I'm having anything against Tom Cruise, but it's just a weird sort of like. It is weird, yeah. But I, I'm I'm really hyped for it because I think it's going to yeah. be awesome. Because I absolutely love the mummy with Brendan Fraser and Rachel Vice. It's remember when Brendan Fraser was the greatest actor in the world? Dude, he still is. He's he's in yeah. my top ten. I tell you, Bedazzled is a modern classic. Yeah. I'll tell you about Bedazzled. It's a bad movie, <laughs> but I've seen it about 64 times. <laughs> really? I, well, yeah. I Like, I know most of it off by heart, and I just want that to be explained to me using science, because I don't get it. <laughs> there's, there's, like, a part in it where he wishes... He's, like, trying to impress that redhead lady, and he's like, I wish I was the most sensitive man in the world. And he ends up... He, he makes... If anyone hasn't seen Bedazzled, like, what are you doing? Also, watch Bedazzled. But um, the devil grants him wishes, and every single time he wishes for something, she, like, fucks up. <laughs> like, he wishes that he was the most sensitive man in the world, and he ends up crying at the sunset, that kind of thing. Mm. He, he writes a song about fish, and <laughs> one of the lyrics is like, You're so much more than a fish to me. You're my playful friend beneath the sea. <laughs> <laughs> I think I feel like I've spoken about Bedazzled on this sh- on this podcast before, but either well, way, I mean, if you've seen it sixty four times, then well, I, I don't count every time I watch a movie, but I definitely know an awful lot of it off by heart. So, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. yeah, I think I've seen equally. I've seen like talking about the Mummy. I think I've seen like the Scorpion King a lot of times. Like, and that's a terrible movie. But that it's, is it's... a bad movie. The Mummy Returns is like an okay movie, but. Uh... The Scorpion King is legit bad, I think. <laughs> but who, it's got the rock in it. It does. Who play? Who plays the bad guy in that movie? No, no, no. I was, uh, Michael Clark Duncan plays it like his him, best friend. It is him, isn't it? No, Michael Clark Duncan plays his best friend. Doesn't Whatever. He? Yeah, he's in the movie. <laughs> yeah. He lets him into the thing at the end, though, doesn't he? Or he gets into that town, that like city at the end, using the siege on the wall. I. Yeah, and then he saves, um, not Lucy Liu, that's racist. Who the <laughs> fuck is the Asian lady that he saved? Oh, God knows. Somebody, I, I want to say, like, Michelle Wu, but that's definitely not right. Um, yeah, so basically, one of the two Asian actors that we know, it's, it's yeah. one of the two female, yeah, Michelle Wu yeah. And, and Lucy Liu are the only two. Mm. Uh, Michelle Yo is another one. Mm, yeah. A Maggie Q, she's Asian. Yeah, that's true. She's in uh, Kill Bill. Yeah. And Too Fast, Too Furious. And Die Hard 4. No way, is she? Is she in Die Hard 4, or is she... Is she one of the bad guys in Die Hard 4? Yeah, I think she's one of, like, the... I want to say she uses karate, but that probably <laughs> sounds racist, but I think she does use, like, karate on, like, John McClane. 
So basically what we've learned is that you know two Asians and you think all Asians are good at karate and use karate all the time. Hey, all I know is that they uh, made season two of Daredevil because ninjas. Because ninjas, so. yeah, that's true. Man, yeah. I fucking love movies. Yeah, I know, right? I really want to see the Power Rangers remake. I don't. Really? Why not? I just... It doesn't do anything for... It just... I mean, the original Power Rangers was such a... Such a time in everyone's lives, and this just, like... Doesn't look... It doesn't have the same sparkle for me, like... You know? I don't really? know. Yeah, the lead actors just look like people I don't... I don't like. Oh my god, I could say an awful lot about the lead actors in it. Really? Yeah. But uh, Becky G, notwithstanding, I don't really like her that much. Right. So, did you see the uh, 1995 Power Rangers movie? Of course. Did you like it? Yeah, of course. Like, that's... I was of the age. I was, like, eight or whatever. I saw so it I was cinema. Like, yeah, exactly. I was, like, well into that. Yeah. Like, you know. I don't know. I'm really hyped for the new one. Nah, I don't think it'll be good. I think it will be. It's got, I... like, an average critic score. <sighs> I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty confident I won't enjoy it. I mean, it could be one of those movies where I'll, it it will be likable enough that I'll be like, yeah, it's a solid, it's a solid enough movie. But um, I, I'm pretty adamant that I won't I won't like it. But I mean, who you knows? There's um the Pink Ranger is played by a girl called Naomi Scott, and uh, she's a musician and she's got this song called Lovers Lies and it's phenomenal, like. I really, really, really like it. It's it's like nothing I've ever heard before. Well, that's not true. But it, it's like a really... You would not expect... Like, if you listen to the song, you'll be like, this is not what I expected at all, basically. I mean, does that mean she can act, though? Oh, I don't know, but I'm sure she can. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have put faith in her. I believe that she can. Yeah. Um. Should we end the episode with the Twilight Zone plot generator? Yeah, go for it. All right, so this is a thing that I found um, on AV Club. It's called tzplotgenerator.com or tzplotgenerator.com if you're an American. Um, and basically what it is is it's like a, an algorithm thing that spits out a would-be plot from the show Twilight Zone, which is – I don't know why the Twilight Zone is seen as – the show that does all the weird stuff when The Outer Limits was from the same time and was so much better. But that's just me talking. But The Outer Limits is better, so fuck The Twilight Zone. Um, so when I click The Twilight Zone plot generator, the first thing that comes up is a very rich woman in an airplane moves through terrifying mist and must repeat the same experience eternally. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty... Like What I really like about it is this woman is very rich, right? So she probably has a taste for, like, a lot of different things in life. This is a woman that enjoys life, and she's flying on an airplane, probably to meet someone that she's excited to see or to do something different or something new or whatever, and it's probably, like, a first-class flight, and it moves through terrifying mist, like, as in the plane actually flies through mist, and I guess some of the mist must seep into the the cabin otherwise how would you even know that you're flying through mist if you're in a plane um but to repeat that experience eternally i feel like the plane flies out of the mist and then back into the mist um, or is it just constant mist yeah i don't know i don't feel like you can move around with that plot you know like yeah it would have to be like a, a groundhog day so yeah you'd have to understand that there are rules yeah. Um, and that there must be an action, a course of action you can take to reverse the situation. Um, yeah, because if we know, I mean, if she just flies through mist all the, all the time. That's kind of boring, really. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be and... like three minutes of like showcasing that she's privileged and that she doesn't care about the air hostess who's being really polite to her and stuff like that. And then it's just her flying through mist. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the pilots just be like, this sure is misty. <laughs> <laughs> but we should have you there eventually, folks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
I've I've skipped through a lot of these, and a lot of them end with "and is given a second chance at life," which is, <laughs> right. which is always great. Um, I'm just gonna flick. Uh, as uh, a rocket designing baseball manager in an abandoned city gets a robot lover, and the mystery is never solved. <laughs> That's one of the weirder episodes. That's amazing, because it's like... Uh, wait, say, read it out again? A rocket designing baseball manager. I guess they mean coach. I don't yeah. know. I mean, can you be a baseball manager? I don't know. Because uh, that, sound, that sounds like the, he's a he manages baseballs. Yeah, he's like, all right, when you go through the sky, listen to me. You're going to be hit yeah. really hard. <laughs> I, want, I want you to spin this way to tune the aerodynamics towards the bat, all right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, a rocket designing baseball manager in an abandoned city gets a robot lover and the mystery is never solved. I mean, I I, I don't know what the mystery is, though. Here's what I would imagine the mystery is. Mm-hmm. Um, so he coaches the baseball team. Yeah. Um. He watches his team put in a great performance. He gets a standing ovation from the audience. Okay. And yeah. uh, this is a town that he's just moved to specifically for this job. And then he he leaves work that day, and he's walking down the street, and he sees some people from the audience, and none of them acknowledge his existence, and he thinks that's weird. They gave me a standing ovation, and he ends up meeting the robot lover, and he only finds out she's a robot when he attempts to love her. And uh, the mystery is that everyone in the town is a robot. What's the rocket thing got to do with it? What was the rocket thing again? He's just... It, it, he's a rocket designing baseball manager. A rocket designing baseball manager. Uh, he makes rockets for the army in his spare time, and it's a plot that doesn't get explored enough in the episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as being and the mystery is never solved, yeah. that would, oh, That's great, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird one. Um... um. Do you, do you have any thoughts on it that jump out at you? Um, no, no, I just, <laughs> I'm, 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 I mean, I mean, I think that's the point of the Twilight Zone is the, at the very end of the episode, you forget what happens at the beginning. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I, like, I, I have the Outer Limits. Uh, I have like seven seasons of The Outer Limits on my computer and I watch them and I'm always like, shit, yo, this is amazing. There's there's like one episode has like Martin Kemp in it, like early Martin Kemp in the early 90s. And it's just phenomenal. He tries to do an American accent and it's just great. Um, that's That was my whole story. Uh, do you want to hear my next plot generator? Go, 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 go. This is a good go, one. Go. Mm-hmm. An alien ex Air Force pilot in a house is taken to the future, but it was all in his head. Yeah. So he's a he's an ex pilot. Yeah. Who's an alien? Yeah. Uh, lives in a house. Gets, he, he lives in. A, I mean, he lives in a house. Obviously, I yeah. mean that's not that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Um, and then it's all in his head. Yeah. Well, he gets taken to the future. Ah, right, okay. I, yeah. I, th- I think you just tie that in with an alien trying to blend in with the human... Yeah, yeah, yeah. ...society and... He takes a job as a pilot. Yeah. Um... He takes it. He's just like, oh, I need a job. Oh, they're looking for a pilot. Yeah, sure, I'll put my CV yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he got here somehow. He has experience. Yeah, really. yeah. He got to Earth somehow. So, um... Welcome to the Air Force. <laughs> and it's Tom Cruise in sunglasses welcoming him to the yeah, yeah, yeah. force. Uh, and that's not explained either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't even get he doesn't even get a credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and everyone's like, Was that Tom Cruise? <laughs> yeah. You're like, uh, no, I don't I didn't read about that. I don't read that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um alright, you do another one. Uh what we got? No, I've, no, I'm not going to skip it. This one is a stranded janitor at a casino travels to the future to help a family member and the mystery is never solved. <laughs> For fuck's you sake. can't have another unsolved mystery. <laughs> I can't handle another unsolved mystery. Oh, this one's good. A telekinetic soldier in a nursing home encount- encounters an electric nanny and kills his nemesis. 
Whoa. That's a good episode. That is a good episode. There's yeah. so many reasons why he could be an electric, uh, telekinetic soldier. Yeah, because, like, there's a flashback in the beginning of the episode where yeah. he's a soldier and something happens because of, like, experimentation at war and then he ends up in, an, in a nursing home. I mean, the electric nanny is a little bit... <laughs> it's um, probably the weirdest part of the episode in all Yeah, yeah, I mean... I don't really know what an electric nanny is. Like, yeah, is she, like, is she vibrant? Is she like, a Portuguese she... international? Yeah. <laughs> Comprised primarily. And, and, yeah, I mean, a telekinetic soldier in a nursing home encounters an electric nanny and kills his nemesis, but I don't know whether like the the electric nanny is helping him kill his nemesis or she kills his. I'm assuming it's a woman. It might not be a woman. A nanny can be a man. Obviously. <laughs> Um, a male nanny. Yeah. That's like a woman <laughs> wanting to be a. <laughs> a what? Yes. What is the answer to that? A penis model. Yeah, king. <laughs> good old friends. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that one's a, that's a good episode. Like the flash, I can see the flashback, and then he's in a nursing home. Definitely leaves it open for whether or not he's just a guy with post traumatic stress. Stress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. And also, like, his soldier nemesis from the Academy is the one he kills. Like, they were in it together. Yeah, totally. And they're having, like, post-traumatic stress, and that's why he has to kill him, because, like, the uh, the assignment was never accomplished, like, or, or he did something to his team. Yeah, that's a good episode. I, I really want to do another episode of The Midnight Hour on fan theories. And, like, every time I try and think up fan theories, it's always, like... Well, what if the whole thing happened in their head all along? And, like, you can just apply that to literally any movie. Like, yeah. John McClane is a desk cop who hates his job and falls asleep. Yeah. <laughs> and he dreams that he brings down Hans Gruber, this international terrorist, with a plot that makes no fucking sense because it's a dream. And then he, he wakes up and he his plane lands in L.A. or whatever. It's, yeah. It's genius. It's, that's yeah. a fan theory right there. Fan Theory 101. Yeah. They did a show about that, didn't they? And it ran for six or seven seasons. Flash Forward? No. Lost? That's the one. Yeah. I said Flash Forward because that was made by the producers of Lost. Yeah. And it was bad. Yeah. And I saw every episode. Oh, really? Yeah. And to bring it back to The Expanse, The Expanse is probably going to get cancelled. And uh, it's going to make me... season? Uh, no, they they have a season three commissioned, but once that happens, it's probably going to get cancelled. And it's nothing to do with the quality of the show. It's because the way they rate, the way they judge TV ratings is utterly ridiculously outdated. So, um, yeah. There's, been, there's a, apparently been a massive drop off in people watching The Walking Dead, though, hasn't I mean, I think it still gets like 16 million people if you take into account uh, like people who like uh, record it and shit. And watch it back on like the internet, and like if you even if you took into account like illegally downloading it and stuff, I think it still does amazingly well. But I, I think I, like there's been a drop off this season in people watching it, which is I think just in general because like a show like that, it's been on seven seasons, you know, and like can't I mean it's not it, it's not a soap opera, like it has to end at some point. Like at the moment, they're still like in that sort of like where is it really heading like they're still in atlanta like you know what i mean so it's like i wonder sometimes that the walking dead is not just made by a bunch of writers who think people in the state of georgia are idiots and like the virus doesn't actually the virus hasn't torn down civilization at all and it's only it's georgia, georgia has been affected it's, yeah i tweeted the other night saying like why are there no mobile phones in the walking dead and it's like a fair point, right? Like, that is okay, a good point. we're assuming that civilization has collapsed and there's no one to maintain the uh, the telephone, the wire, like the three G signal and all that stuff. That's fine. I, c I can go along with that. But like, there's but wouldn't they be trying to reach some sort of like tower? Yeah, like nine. nine you can dial nine one one. You can you can make an emergency call with no SIM card in your phone. Like, yeah. I, th it doesn't even matter to me that they don't have phones for communication. It's the fact that they don't have fucking phones at all. Like, this this comes from you know 
I can't go anywhere without my phone. I, I have to mm. have it like strapped to my person at all times. And I yeah. think if the world were in a state of imminent collapse, I would still be doing the same thing, like irrespective of whether or not the comms are working. And like apart from that, they go to uh, Alexandria for the first time and they have working electricity. And Carl plays a fucking Atari or a Nintendo or whatever. It yeah, is. so you'd be like plugging your phone in, wouldn't plug you? Plugging your like... phone and play Snake or something. Why? Yeah. Like, there's not even a place there. It's all primitive. Like technology. I'm, I'm sure you've got like some like some snaps on your phone that you saved, and like you just want to look through or something. Exactly. I mean, you know, realism. Come there's, on, there's guys. There's no reason to just not have a smartphone yeah. by your side. Like, there's no reason whatsoever to not have one. Like, irrespective of failed comms. Links I mean, let's not even let's to take out like phones, iPads. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like, no one phones on an iPad. Can you, don't you need imagine it a... how well? organized Negan could keep his shitty little prison if he had an iPad. I know, just, yeah. Like, this doctor equals bad. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. I don't know. It, it's it's stupid to me um, and I am right about everything. By the way, this is not a, this is not a, this is going to be a controversial thing that I'm about to say, but I'm so mm. fucking sick of Negan already. Like, Jesus Christ, this guy. Like, every single thing he says is like, Oh, well, we don't need to do that now, do we? I can do this thing, and I can wave Lucille around here like the psychopath that I am. Yeah, it is, it's, it is kind of that sort of, like, he's he does the same thing every episode. He's like sickly. It's yeah. too much. Like, the governor was great because he was an actual, like, um, what would you even call it? He was like a... He was a, a sociopath that was integrated with society around him. So he was like, yes, Andrea, I like all of these things and this is my tactic and I'm a very astute and sensitive man. And on the other hand, he's like, yep, yeah, I have human heads in jars in my basement. And it's like you, you get that he's a psychopath and he's very charming and cunning and uh, charismatic. Whereas Negan is like... Well, well, looks like we got ourselves some fighting going on down here. <laughs> I'm going to take Lucille out and I'm going to see... Uh, uh, it's like he leaves himself open to be shot. So I'm, I cannot believe he is not dead. As a, I just, I cannot believe no one has fucking taken the shot. Like, it's ridiculous. The fact mm. that Rosita, Rosita is sad because she's a fucking idiot who missed that point blank range with a bullet that got stuck inside of a baseball bat. Which, ugh, I, I can't, I just, it's annoying. It's just annoying. Yeah, I think the reason, like we said, touched on it before, like, the reason it is so annoying is because it could be so good. I know, I know. It's like, they just, like, just, just, uh, to take a baseball on, and you just, they've, they've, they've swung really hard, like, and they've just, just missed, like, uh, just missed. Like, if they connected with it, it would have been an amazing score you know or a touchdown um it's like they were winning and i don't know baseball scores so mm -hmm. i'll go off the top of my head what i think baseball yeah. scores are it's like they're winning 150,000 to nil yeah and they're like all right and all right let's let's stop playing for a while and let's try some other funny shit like instead of a baseball bat let's use a sponge and then eventually, like, the other team catches up, and the Walking Dead are like, oh, shit, now what do we do? Ah, oh, let's just throw some shit at this and hope that it works. And ugh, it's just... It's tiring. It's but exhausting. then, the, I think the season finale is, like, next week, isn't it? Yeah, and they, you know they're not going to kill Negan, and it's just... <laughs> it's going to end on a cliffhanger again, which, by the way, fucking series writing 101, don't fucking end your series on a cliffhanger for crying out loud. Problem is they can because they know they're like renewed for the next season. Yeah, I think that's that's you know that's annoying. That's but. the real travesty here. I think what is uh, interesting, like, to we take it back to movies before we like end it, but is um they could remake certain things on television, like movies and stuff like that, and make them like a ten point Netflix show. Yeah, and just throw a bunch of money at it and be like, this could be amazing. I think The Matrix would be really well served as a TV show. Exactly, yeah. I was thinking about that, about... Um, what was that fucking Nolan movie with DiCaprio and Inception. Tom Hardy? Inception. Do an Inception series and do just ten episodes of, like, Inception-y stuff. Yeah, that would that'd be, be really good. 
that would be amazing. Like get mm-hmm. Tom Hardy because he he's he does anything if you throw enough money at him. I think you'd um, have, you'd have like a detective episode and like a James Bond episode, a war yeah. episode. Like it, that's really doable. Yeah, you could make it. Remember that show Sliders? Eh, uh, no. <laughs> Well, that was a show. A lot of people probably won't remember it. I don't know why I said it. It's such a random thing. Um, but it's like a different thing in every episode. It's sort of like Quantum Leap, that kind of thing. Right, okay, yeah. Like, Inception would be really well served in that kind of guise, I think. Even though, like, Inception's a phenomenal movie. <laughs> so, we... It's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's not... Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, in terms of remaking things... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. They should do a lot of stuff like that. Mm. They should... Put The Walking Dead in the bin. Yeah. And, well, uh, I think I was so disappointed. Not disappointed, but I. Gotham is a series that I wanted to like and never got got into, really. But, like, that's the thing where you like, it could be so good. Yeah, like, it, I never even bothered with it because the reviews were so bad. Like, it could be so good because that world is so fantastic um, and fleshed out already. Like, it doesn't need that much fleshing out because it's already there especially if you know the universe and stuff like the characters are all there but um yeah should we end the podcast well let's just have one last uh twilight zone plot generator and just leave it there like not even discuss it oh that's a great idea have you got one that's good or do you want me to just read out what i've got it's, I will read this one and then we'll laugh at it and then you can read what you've got. Okay. A telekinetic group of tree people in Switzerland have eternal life and unleash evil onto the world. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I've i never been to Switzerland, but I assume that's what everyone in Switzerland is like anyway. Yeah, same, yeah. Um, anyway, I'll read this one out. A screw-up businessman in a hospital finds a camera that tells the future and leaves his planet for one dot 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 called earth oh. 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 that is actually really good <laughs> yeah no it's like a lot better than any of the other i wish that was the one we decided to talk about <laughs> oh. and now we end we've ended it without discussing it like an amazing twilight design episode right. just leaving it with like oh what could have been <laughs> probably wondering what is this magic otherworldly trance i'm engulfed in right now and let me tell you fellas it's naomi scott's song lover's lies for those of you with really short attention spans she is the pink power ranger and the song's just a banger i absolutely love it ever since i first heard it i've been listening to it on repeat and I think you should do the same thing. It it takes me to another planet. It's relaxing. It's it's so soothing and it's so unexpected, I guess. I'd also just really recommend checking out the video. It's it's trippy and it's it's nice. It's the song itself is this kind of like eastern mystic kind of vibe that I just I don't expect from <laughs> contemporary starlet 
actresses and um yeah I, I i'm just i'm blown away by the quality of the song i really enjoyed it. i hope you guys like it too that's the episode closing out the show that's the episode that's the song closing out the show i hope you guys really enjoyed the episode and if you didn't i'm sorry we'll do better next time but i really enjoyed this conversation and uh, i really enjoy every conversation that i have with loose more about movies and also about other stuff I just am so fucking exhausted. I'm going to leave you guys with the song and I hope that it makes you happy enough to give this show a positive rating. I've been El De Niro. Fuck everything.